Hey folks, it's Cozzy here, drafting for pick one, pack one. Felt like I was in the mood for a draft, so we might as well record it and see what we get. So this is quite a strong pack starting off. Uh, Lathrae Falchion is very, very good. Being able to give a creature plus four power and lifesteal is huge. It's a massive swing around, especially on defense. Fourth Tree Elder is a very, very difficult creature to deal with. Combra Healy is great if you're in that color combination. We have Minotaur Grunt, we have Rebel Sharpshooter. It's a very, very solid pack overall. I think in this instance, uh, the Falchion is probably a slightly stronger card, but I've been doing an awful lot of shadow-based drafts. I realized it didn't go well for me last time when I tried to force Combray. I definitely got into trouble there. But the 4-3 Elder isn't a massive drop down. Indeed, even the Cobalt Monument is a good card. In fact, I'm amazed that I didn't bring it up earlier. Uh, as I've said before with the Monuments, they're great early and they're great late. If you need power, then you can play them uh, before your fifth power and just accept the fact that you've got a bit of t tempo disadvantage. And if you want them late, well, all of a sudden, instead of having one extra sigil in your deck that's just flooding you out, you now have yourself a Storm Dance with Flying. I'll tell you what, I haven't done much with blue, so let's, uh, let's draw it and see how we go. Uh, we have a Tundra Explorer, which is a good card, a Piercing Shot, which is an exceptional card, a Gorgon Fanatic, which is a role player, and outside of that, a couple of solid cards. Uh, if we want to be getting aggressive, then Tundra Explorer is the card to do it, especially if we're going spell heavy, but it's a little bit of a paradox. And Piercing Shot's a very reliable strong card. Or if I want, I could just be saying, you know what, let's see how we go getting into Felon Aggro. I'm not the biggest fan of the archetype. I feel as though there's better ones around. And I think for the time being, I really just want to be making sure that I, be, uh, I take the strongest or one of the strongest cards in each pack. So we took the Piercing Shot, and it looks like, yet again, fire is quite open. We have a choice between a Rebel Sharpshooter and an Ornate Katana. I think the Rebel Sharpshooter is phenomenal. All she takes is one extra piece of equipment, one pump spell, and you have yourself a very difficult creature to block indeed. Rapid Shot is solid, Granite Acolyte is solid, District Infantry is solid, but Piercing Shot is amazing, so it's a relatively easy decision. Vidarkin's Staff is phenomenal. It's uh, a 3 cost plus 3 plus 3 which is nothing to be sneezed at and if you ever go late it's some form of flood mitigation. That being said we don't look like we're going to be remotely near Combre Colors. However what else do we have that's interesting? I think the only other card that's interesting is the Bright Mace Paladin which is still pulling me over on my colors. Amethyst Acolyte is okay and if that's the case we might as well speculate and see where we go because this definitely has the higher upside. Knife Jack I hate, uh, Yeti Snowslinger is tolerable, and if we're going aggressive it could fit in, even though I've never really seen a red-blue deck work, but I think it's the strongest of the cards here, unless we want to be going into Shadow, which I'm not a massive fan of. One Katana is an amazingly late pick for us. It allows us to turn our Sharpshooter on, and it cantrips, so you can't really ask for too much more than that. And here we have a choice either between some fixing or a snow slinger. The advantage of the Felm Stranger is it's likely that I'm going to play it in any deck that I play. If we were looking more at the tokens, then I could be quite tempted by the Premium Rally, which is very, very pretty indeed. But no, I think we'll take the Felm Stranger, even if we do end up uh, in blue, then it'll help us out there. Nothing much to see here. Probably the best card is the Fledgling or the Sideguard Arm. We'll take the Fledgling. And then here, if we're looking at Elysian, then we can take the Camel. Currently, we're a little bit split. We've only really seen Fire coming through strong. And then the rest has been relatively soft. Always getting tempted into Stone Scar, but fortunately there's some slightly better cards here for me to consider. Uh, we have the option of Wisdom of the Elders, which could give me the opportunity to go long or refill a Gorgon Fanatic. Uh, but I think I'm definitely in red, no matter what. We could consider the fixing. In all honesty, ordinarily I'll be looking at the Thorn Beast, but I'm trying to break out a new pasture. So let's what see. Let's what see. Let's see what we manage to do with this. Torch, Furnace Mage, both phenomenal cards. Champion Pro Progress is fine if I'm in Combre, but I'm not. So I think in this instance, this is really the only choice I need to make. 
uh, torch is premium removal and it's flexible and it's fast furnace mage is a likely two for one with a decent upsize i think i will just take the torch right here and be happy with it and now we're really beginning to see some options of where we want to go so it's two very very good uh, green cards coming through and not a lot else if I do stay taking green, I could be looking into just splashing a little bit of time. The reality is Gilded Glaive is such a powerful card. Otherwise I could be taking my fixing right now. Currently the best card that I've picked is actually the Staff which is a little bit worrying. The Gilded Glaive is the kind of card that will win aggressive decks, so I think we'll go there and see what we get. And if that's the case, I really want to start look at, to look at this Warcry archetype. The Monument is a nice card. Katana is also a nice card. If I wanted to go heavy in time, I could be looking at the Acolyte, but I think for the time being, I'm better off just choosing my two colors and sticking to it. So I have my choice between the Katana that I'm guaranteed to play or the Minotaur Grunt to try and massage out an archetype. Whilst I'd like the Warcry, I don't want to take the risk of picking a card that's not going to be going into my deck. And we know that we're in the right archetype with Fire because we've just been gifted not only one of the best two drops in Fire, but probably one of the best two drops in the game. Rakana Atlaw is phenomenal absolutely brilliant so really we're just looking at the best way of complementing my fire deck if that's the case blazing renegade doesn't excite me at all it's way too overcosted for its uh, strength and health grenade and drone is good if we start to build around it but ricano really aren't the colors for a token build otherwise we could look at getting the elysian stranger primarily so that we get uh, the opportunity to splash for time and I think that's the way I'm going to go because a 2 mana 2-2 two two is not the end of the world none of this interests me whatsoever I think the card that probably scares me the most is the Sky Snapper so we'll take it and yeah this is looking quite thin the Cobalt Acolyte is a good card so if we keep seeing absolute rubbish then we can contemplate uh, heading back over as we haven't been fed much good green at all if we're looking at playing blue, we actually have some reasonable cards for it. We really do. If that's the case, I think I speculatively... How late is it for me to start looking at Static Bolts? I've seen one go past already. Otherwise, I could get the Rampage, which is a solid enough combat trick. Although, if we're playing this way, we'll be looking at trying to give as many creatures flying as possible. I think we'll always find more Rampages, and if we get two Rampages at the end, then their value doesn't increase too much. If, however, we find two Static Bolts towards the end of the draft, they're going to go up massively. So I think we'll take the Speculative pick right now. None of this is exciting. Levitate is quite good for us. And there's been a lot of Monuments going around. Marison's Disciple is an out-and-out -out bomb. It's straight-up card advantage. It's good power for the cost. But the only thing it's missing is that it's not in our colors. Which is a real shame. Rakano Flagbear is a little bit too weak to try and accommodate for its war cry. Runic Revolver is a great piece of equipment. Cobalt Acolyte could fit into this formative plan that we have, as could the Sky Snapper to get as aggressive as possible. I like this. I, I want to try out this idea of going aggressive in red-blue. And if that's the case, Sky Snapper is a perfect aggressive card for us. I feel as though I'm much more likely to be fed this than I am to be fed other cards. And it's definitely the colors that are open. Serpent Trainer fits in with this. It's basically 4 mana for 2 2 twos. Otherwise, I could take another Katana. We I don't really have the low curve, and I feel as though we're getting close to a saturation point for these. If I was in a, a Stone Scar and looking at Smuggler's Stash, then I'd want more. Lightning Strike, premium removal, but it's based on being defensive. 
So I think for this, I want to be trying to commit to an archetype. Premium Lightning Strike definitely does tempt me though. Wow, two foils in a packet. I didn't realize you could ever get two foils in a packet. This being said, Ice Sprite fits the bill. It doesn't have the power and toughness, but it removes a creature. It forces them to use their removal on something that I don't care too much about. Um, so perfectly fine card. And here all of a sudden come the green cards that we haven't been seeing at all. That being said, we're going to stay on with our fire cards. The Gorilla Fight is great. If we have a board established and we can play this on turn 4, uh, fatiguing their blocker, then we can keep getting damage in. This is really, really interesting what's been going through. Out of these cards, I feel like the choices are either a Smuggler's Stash with the plan on splashing into Shadow, a Blind Storyteller, knowing that it'll allow us to mitigate some degree of Flood, or a Pyrodep just to stamp plan, even though it's very suboptimal. I currently have one Film Stranger, which means that it is quite possible for me to splash the Stash. So I think we'll take that one because it's the one my... Wow. So, okay. So I was wondering to myself whether fire was just being picked heading back uh, from my right. But I think what this shows is the torch going so late probably just means that there were no fire cards in the previous packs. I'm glad that's the case because I was beginning to get nervous. And at least now I know that I'm still probably heading in the right direction. Unlikely I'm going to be playing any of these, so we'll take the Heavy Axe. And I could possibly play the second site. Yet again, Stone Scar's colors are achingly open. I find it amazing how often that combination gets no love. <laughs> and back to where we started. I tell you what, if we would have had a pair of Lathrae Falcons... Falchions, rather, we would have been very, very happy. This pack is absolutely stacked with Shadow. I'm sure that it hasn't been shuffled upright. But there's no point commiserating over that. Instead, we want to think about what we can do with this deck. So... The the slightly unfortunate thing is, and again, I have genuinely been trying to get off drafting Stone Scar. Sorry, yeah, Stone Scar. Is that the best cards I have? Actually, that's not true. We still have some decent cards here. I just haven't seen anything that I want. I guess we could plausibly be using the Warhelm. That relieves me quite a bit. And now we can either take the Stone Scar Stranger, which will almost be able to guarantee that we can splash our Smuggler's Stash, or we can take the Second Wisdom of the Elders to really give ourselves some card advantage. Both of these are basically playing for card advantage. I feel as though, ironically, the easier one of the two for me to manage will be the Stash. So I think I want to take my fixing here whilst I can. Nothing super exciting here. We could stay with the plan of getting a 2-drop that's got flying. That's actually quite evasive and problematic if I put a katana on it. Yeah, even though this traditionally isn't an aggressive card, I feel as though it's the best I've got from the options here. And now we have two very good choices. We can either play the Skycrag Wyvark. Uh, slightly overpriced, but it allows us to basically just get in and kill a creature that would otherwise be a problematic blocker. Or the Rebel Illuminator, which is a guaranteed 2 for 1 unless they have a silence effect. Wisdom of the Elders is also a good card, but I feel as though one, maybe two of them is enough. And this idea of just getting yet another torch, I think is a bit hard to pass up on. Cobalt Acolyte allows us to continue with giving our creatures evasiveness. Eastwind Herald is the best of these, but not very good at all. And then we're looking at either an assembly line to go wide or a magma javelin. So currently, in our playables, we have the torch, the warhelmed, and then some twos. So we have two, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, we'll be able to drop some of those Eastwind Heralds. 
threes we have two, four, five, six, seven. Have a couple of fours and then a little bit of a top end that's nice. I like the idea of being able to go wide, although we haven't really got anything else to support it. So perhaps the idea of just having a surprising piece of removal that can remove yet another blocker is the way we want to go. We take the opportunity to give something else flying and hey, look at that. We managed to get ourselves a very late, wow, some very, very late cards. So whilst this isn't your traditional archetype, I feel as though it came together relatively well, and that was primarily because fire was just so open. Ah, oh, did we have a rally? Then that was a wrong decision for me not to be taking uh, those token generators. That was a genuine mistake then. Could be tempted to look at that. I could be tempted to take that. Did even that. So with our current stranger lineup, we have a bonus on two blue. and two purple, which is really good for fixing up our influence requirements right here. We have two monuments, which I'm happy about, and then smuggler's stash and some decent pieces of or decent weapons. So I think the basic game plan here is to get someone down early, to try and get a bit of extra evasiveness on them, either through giving them flying or uh, some kind of weapon and just to keep pushing my advantage of just hitting in as fast as possible and as hard as possible. So the cards that we don't want, I don't think I want the Jotun Warrior, he'll be too slow for me. This is just here as a placeholder so I can consider it. We definitely want the Rebel Illuminator, that's amazing. The Magma Javelin is good as is the Warcry. I'm happy with the Wisdom of the Elders even though the Double Primal will be a little bit of a challenge. Rally I could be convinced to drop. Ice Sprites are great. Acolytes are part of our plan. Snow Sling is one of the weaker two drops. As we only got one Static Bolt, we can drop it and the second sight is not needed now that we have a pair of Wisdom of the Elders. Piercing Shot is great. Katana is great. Lightning Strike is good, but it doesn't really work on the Axis that we want to. We have our Strangers, a Herald, a Warhelm. I don't think we want too many Heralds. They're, they're not the power and toughness that we really want for this kind of deck. The thing that they have in their favor is that they're evasive and the Levitate Cantrips. So with this kind of deck with a very low top end, I think we probably want to be running 17 Sigils. We already have two in our Monuments. So if that's the case, we need 15 and we're dominant blue, but we want slightly early red. So, seven plus the monument makes eight. Eight fire sigils, so we have 16, 17. That gives us even on fire and primal. I don't think we need a normal shadow sigil. I think our fixing is going to be coming from having both the monument and our strangers, and if that's the case, I don't think we can afford to support two cards with Shadow Influence. So looking at this then, we've got two cuts to make. Sky Snappers work really well for the archetype that we're trying to play. I think we're probably looking in the two drops. If that's the case, East Wind Herald and Yeti Snow Slinger are probably the weakest of the ones that we have. That leaves us with 15 units, slightly on the low side. Perhaps I could consider dropping the Warhelm. Although the Warhelm is really nice once I give something flying. 
or indeed late in the game if I flood it out a little bit and I get my and I'm on five power so I can play my serpent trainer as well as my warhelm especially if my opponents are powered down okay no I think I like this it's it's definitely an unorthodox deck and part of it is because I am trying to get a little bit of variety for my website. Uh, if this was just me drafting and if I was just drafting to do as well as I could, this perhaps would have looked quite different. We would have had some lifelinking uh, weapons in the deck, that's for certain. But as it is, we're able to get away with this primarily because fire was so achingly open. And I think it'll be interesting. I look forward to seeing an aggressive deck that can reload. It can reload very effectively indeed. So yeah, we're going to be dropping creatures, giving them flying, and trying to get through to the end zone. Well folks, that's a slightly unorthodox deck. I look forward to seeing how it goes. Thanks for watching the video so far, and I hope you jo join me in a couple of minutes to, to watch our matches. It's been Cozzy drafting for Pick 1, Pack 1. Have a good one.